With the release of WoW's new expansion, The War Within, we finally get to dive into the first part of the World Souls saga and take on the Harbinger, Zalatath. Exploring the depths of the Isle of Dorn sets us on a path to discover the true power of Azeroth and save it from the powers of the Void. However, something I find that hasn't been fully explained leading up to this expansion and something that I haven't seen many people talk about is what exactly the world soul is. And in this video, I want to take the time to explain not only what the world soul is in WoW, but also explain what a world soul is in mythology. Before we begin, I want to mention two things. One is that the footage you're seeing is my playthrough of the opening moments of the expansion. So the video format is going to be slightly different from my usual as well. We're not only going to be touching on the mythology of what a world soul is, but as well, the philosophy behind it. So if you enjoy this, then let me know in the comments and be sure to show your support. Within the lore of World of Warcraft, the concept of a world soul has been teased since the beginning of the series. With the first three games, Warcraft, Orcs and Humans, Warcraft 2, and Warcraft 3, We've been told that the world of Azeroth is one of the most important places and aspects of the universe, as it's Medivh, the guardian and prophet, who bring the orcs to Azeroth through the Dark Portal so they may find a new home away from the corruption of the Burning Legion. In later expansions, we learn that the nature of the Burning Legion is to set out to different worlds to not only corrupt, but destroy the worlds that they come across. This legion of demons is led by a mad titan, Sargeras, an immensely powerful cosmic titan who seeks to cleave any worlds that have come in contact with the void in the form of beings known as the Old Gods. Being extremely powerful, these Old Gods seek only to control and corrupt everything in the universe, latching themselves onto fledgling worlds deep within their earth to consume the energies it holds and manipulate all life on that planet to further their purpose. It's this energy within Azeroth that forms only the first part in our understanding of the world soul. Now, it's here that I'd like to explain this energy and the concept of the world soul in a more mythical and philosophical sense. And as this may get a little complicated, please feel free to repeat this section if you need to. The concept of a world soul is one that is extremely expansive and is one that exists in different levels of comprehension. In the simplest level, we can view the world soul as our planet existing as a singular life form that grows, adapts, and evolves over time just like the many species that grow and exist on it. And that between our world and its soul and the many species on it all exist together cohesively, interconnected on a metaphysical level. In ancient Greek and Roman mythology, this view has been conceptualized with the primordial goddess Gaia, who was the embodiment of the earth. It was with her that all life existed on the planet and that by nurturing the planet, we would be nurturing her in her old age and vice versa. In a negative aspect, when Gaia is harmed or abused, in the case of her and Tartarus consummating, she was to birth the monstrous Typhon who knew nothing but destruction and malice. In addition, in Roman and Greek philosophy, they viewed the world soul as parting intelligence onto both the life that existed on the planet, but as well with the rest of the cosmos. Seeing as the Greeks and Romans viewed the cosmos and the planet as intelligent and cognizant beings, they could easily and freely pass on knowledge to one another. In his dialogues, Plotinus, a Greek philosopher, claims that the world soul, known in Latin as anima mundi, is one that animates the physical, visible universe. This means that just as we humans have souls in us that extend their knowledge and energies between one another, 
The world's soul itself does the same thing with the rest of the cosmos. This is actually where the next level of comprehension comes in, as with Plato's dialogue Timaeus, the universe at large exists as an intelligent and living entity. Capable of both reason and understanding, the universe was fully made by a being known as the Demiurge. Now, this gets a bit complicated as the Gnostics would adopt the Demiurge as a creator figure under the one true God, while with Plato, he would formulate that the Demiurge was the artisan of the universe and that the world soul was to be intelligent and reasonable as creatures. Continuing with Plato's view, he saw the world soul as being genuinely perfect, existing as a complete sphere that equated to the mathematical ratios of Pythagoras. Now, I'm not going to get into the entirety of the math of it here, but just know that the Pythagorean ratios are meant to express harmonious patterns in a perceptible sense. I've left a link in the description to Dr. Susan Meyer's explanation of this, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. So this view of the world itself and the universe as a whole, as having a soul that not only influenced one another, but connected with everything else in the universe is a pretty wild concept. But it's something that will help us as we learn more about the world soul within World of Warcraft. See, the energy that the old gods were thriving off of was the very same type of energy that formed the mad titan Sargeras. See, Sargeras was once a titan of the pantheon of cosmic beings known simply as the Titans. This pantheon consisted of Agrimar, Sargeras, Kazgoroth, Norganon, Aonar, Golganeth, and their leader, Amanthul, the first of the Titans. It's these Titans, these cosmic beings, that existed as the order within the chaos of the universe, forming the dragon aspects on Azeroth, as well as searching for signs of new fledgling Titans. And these Titans were infinitely powerful beings of the cosmos that weren't formed through normal means, but instead were born through hugely powerful energies that condensed for millions of years within stars, until eventually a planet would be formed around it from gathering the drifting debris from space. This energy within the planet, after some more time, would eventually form itself into a titan, just like the rest of the Pantheon of Order, to continue their purpose of constant maintenance of the universe. Now, I'd like to mention as well that the Titans within the Pantheon of Order share some resemblances with the Titans of Greek myth, as these Titans were the rulers of the heavens and the earth before being defeated by their offspring, the Olympians, during the Titanomachy. This is something that I plan on going over in greater detail in a separate video when we cover the Titans specifically. But what I find noteworthy in all this is that this concept of a titan existing within a world and being born from it is that this is nearly identical to the thought behind the world egg or cosmic egg. As both a mythological and philosophical motif, the cosmic egg shares that an egg exists as the first thing among the vast dark emptiness of space that suddenly cracks open and the universe is created, or in other terms, a all-powerful creator is born to create the universe. This motif is seen throughout the world, with versions differing depending upon which culture believes what. In Chinese myth, the god Pengu is born from the egg and uses the top half of that egg to form the heavens while using the bottom half to form the earth and the underworld. In Egypt, some cults believe that the sun god Ra was born from the primeval mound or egg known as the Benben to bring light into the universe. Even in Zoroastrianism from Persia during the 6th century BCE, they viewed the sky as the outer portion of the shell. 
and the earth as the interior of the egg, seeing as they viewed the egg and the earth as spherical. So while the concept of a cosmic egg may not be such a novel thing within our world, for World of Warcraft, this was actually quite a novel thing, as it wouldn't be until the end of the Legion expansion that the knowledge that Azeroth, the planet, was really a growing titan. And as Sargeras sought to stab through the hole of Azeroth to kill the sleeping titan within, he was brought back to the Pantheon of Order for subjugation. This would allow Azeroth to continue their growth into a fully-fledged titan. Now this thought was further expanded upon in the Battle for Azeroth expansion, with the eruption of Azerite, and as well with Magni Bronzebeard acting as her speaker, evoking the thought of the titan of Azeroth being wholly intelligent and reasonable. And now, with the World Soul Saga in full swing, the sleeping titan deep within Azeroth is in trouble once again. And with this new knowledge and understanding of what the World Soul is, you yourself can help destroy the corruption of the void with the war within. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.